In our first sample problem, a 2.9 kilogram fan cart is moving to the right by generating a 0 0.9 newton thrust. Neglect backwards friction and drag. All right, to set up this problem, this is a forces problem, so we're gonna write down the quantities that are in Newton's second law. So we have net force, mass, and acceleration. And we'll start by drawing our forces on the fan cart. So we know that weight always pulls down on an object, so weight downwards. The object is touching the ground, so the ground is going to push upwards on our cart, cause an upward normal force. And then our fan, we can see, is blowing air to the left. And when the fan pushes air to the left, the air is going to push the fan to the right. And we call that thrust. All right, notice in the problem it says to neglect backwards friction and drag, otherwise we'd have both of those to the left. So that gives us a total of three forces acting on the fan cart. All right, so let's start filling out some given. 2.9 kilograms, whenever we see kilograms, we know that kilograms measure mass. So I'm gonna write in 2.9 kilograms for the mass. And it says 0 0.9 newtons is our thrust. 0.9 newtons is our thrust. All right, anytime we know the mass, we can find the weight using the equation W equals mg. I'm gonna use g as 10 meters per second squared in the problem. You might be using 9.81 depending on your teacher. So I know the earth pulls down on every kilogram with 10 newtons of force. So 2.9 times 10 gives me 29 and our units become newtons. All right, this fan cart is moving to the right on flat ground, so the fan cart is not moving up or down, so the up and down forces should be balanced, giving us a normal force of 29 newtons. All right, so going over and looking at the left side, we know the magnitude of the normal force is 29 newtons. And then it says, what is the magnitude of the net force on the fan cart? To figure out our net force, we first cross out any forces that balance, so I know the, the weight and the normal force balance out. Then look at my forces acting forward and, and acting backwards, which are the forces that are left over. In this case, I only have one force left over, that's the thrust, so my net force is going to be 0 0.9 newtons, which is also our uh, third answer. All right, lastly, it asks us for the fan cart's acceleration. Well, we know that Newton's law states Newton's second law states that net force equals mass times acceleration. If I divide both sides by mass, I can get an equation that says acceleration is equal to net force divided by mass. So plugging that in, I would do the net force of 0 0.9 divided by the mass of 2.9, and that would give me an acceleration of 0 0.310 meters per second squared. So the units work out like that because a newton is defined as a kilogram times a meter per second squared. So when I divide by kilograms, we're just left with meters per second squared. All right, so my acceleration is my fourth answer. So we got 0 0.310 meters per second squared. And I describe the fan cart speed. Well, I'm going to go back and look at my forces. And I also know that this cart is moving to the right. I can tell by those motion lines right there. I have more force acting forwards than backwards. And anytime we have more force acting forwards than backwards, we know that our speed will be increasing. All right, let's take a look at another example. So in our second sample problem, we have a 70 kilogram teacher including the parachute, is skydiving. Before opening the parachute, the teacher experiences a 450 newton drag. All right, so for any forces problem, we're going to write down net force, mass, and acceleration, and draw our forces on the highlighted object. All right, in this case, our skydiving teacher, well, we know that the earth is always pulling downwards, so we have weight downwards, and as the teacher moves downwards, the 
they're going, there's going to be air resistance or drag. Drag always points backwards, so we're going to have drag upwards. Since we're not on the surface, there can't be any friction, can't be any normal force, so that is it. We just have two forces. All right, filling out our given, 70 kilograms is the teacher's mass. And the teacher experiences a 450 newton drag. Since we know the mass, we also know the weight. So the weight is equal to mass times the gravitational constant. So the Earth pulls down on every kilogram with 10 newtons of force. So I'll do 70 times 10, and I'll get 700 newtons as the teacher's weight. So anytime I know all of the forces, I can always find the net force. So we have 700 newtons pointing downwards and 450 newtons pointed upwards. Anytime we have forces acting in opposite directions, they're fighting against each other. So I'm going to subtract. 700 minus 450 gives me 250 newtons as my net force. Then to get my acceleration, we can do net force divided by mass. So 250 divided by 70 gives me an acceleration of 3.57. And as we talked about in the last problem, our units will work out to meters per second squared. All right, filling out our answers on the left side. The net force was 250 newtons. The mass was 70 kilograms. And the teacher's speed, we need to describe that as increasing, decreasing, or constant. So remember, always take a look at your motion lines. This tells me that the teacher is moving downwards. The force that's pointing downwards is larger, so I have more force acting forwards, more force acting in the direction the teacher is moving, and that causes the speed to, again, in be increasing.